Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? It's Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics. We've reached the end of that comic book week. We reached the end of the work week, except for those that are working the weekend. But it is Friday, which means it's time for last call. And it's time for FOC. This is our video where we give you our picks for books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night. But Jack, how was your week? Good so far. Busy, of course, but you know, that's that's as per usual now. We're getting back in the swing of everything. But the week is never complete until we're talking FOC comics. Right. And we want to bring up that tomorrow, Saturday, if you're watching this during the premiere on Friday night, Saturday, October 3rd at 2 p.m., we have two variants going up for sale, don't we? Yeah, that's right. Two amazing variants going up for sale. We've got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 55, the final issue in the Amazing Boom Studios run. Uh, we've got the incredible Jun Yun Yoon doing the cover. He did our very first cover with Boom Studios and Seven Secrets number one. We've got a trade dress variant available printed to just a thousand copies for only $14.99 um, as well as a color hold virgin copy available in sets of two for $39.99 and those are available again at Simpleman's Comics as well as the 616 Comics. Um, tomorrow or Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and that is not it. As Brian said, we've got two books hitting uh, this week. We've also got The Last Ronin, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles classic coming from Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. We've got two covers to that from the amazing Hal Laren. First one, uh, incredible virgin cover uh, depicting Ronin uh, up high on a perch with the raindrops coming down, uh, go, sitting next to a gargoyle. And the second uh, featuring his fallen brothers um, beside him. And, of course, that R.I.P. Jabroni tribute on the star. Those are limited to 450 copies for the gargoyle copy, as well as 250 for the fallen brothers copy. Uh, and those will both be on sale, both the, the TMNT and the MMPR at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday uh, at SimplemansComics.com as well as the 616Comics.com. Yeah, and speaking of the last Ronin, last Ronin's hitting final order cutoff this Monday night, so we'll make sure to get your order in for that, right? Oh, absolutely. That is the book. Now, this has been pushed back, delayed. I know that we've talked about it several times, um, but that's why I think it could get slept on an FOC. Definitely going to be a book everyone's paying attention to, but um, these, these delayed FOCs can sometimes creep up on you. So do not forget, make sure you get your last Ronin orders in this weekend if you have not already. It's not too often we talk about original graphic novels for FOC, but here we are, Power Rangers fans, and we got that Power Rangers Sins of Future original graphic novel, right? Yeah, and this graphic novel got a lot of publicity coming out of San Diego Comic-Con at home of this year's virtual SDCC. Um, there is a first appearance in the pages of this original graphic novel. Um, this is the only way it's, this story is going to be printed. Um, so uh, while it is an original graphic novel, this is something I want to point out for, I, I know we've got some, some cult Power Ranger fans who watch the shows regularly, and this is going to be a great opportunity to pick up uh, a first appearance. And here's the thing. This is a 1999 graphic novel, but graphic novels, they get some of the best discounts out there when you pre-order. So if you put this pre-order and you can get this thing at a solid price, again, first appearance uh, in, in this printing. And from Boom over to Image Comics, here's a book that got a lot of publicity this week. And we're talking about that Spawn number 311. That's right. Uh, Todd McFarlane did it again with a cover B. Uh, you know, we, of course, we're talking about Ninja Spawn with 310. Now with 311, we are talking about this amazing uh, Al Simmons uh, homage to uh, uh, T'Challa and Black Panther and specifically Chadwick Boseman with that uh, rest in peace Chadwick Boseman kind of adorned on top. 
uh, an incredible, incredible cover. Um, and not only that, there's a black and white incentive one in five version um, that just got added. So be on the lookout for that. I think both of them will be popular. They'll both be heavily ordered. But that's the thing about Spawn. Spawn lingers at first. You know, it seems like it's available and, you know, it, it didn't really pop. And the next thing you know, it dries up. And the next thing you know, you're like, those are selling for what? Do not sleep on this one. Make sure you get those orders in before FOC. Shifting from those independent publishers, we go over to Marvel with Immortal Hulk number 39. Yeah, and Immortal Hulk fans have been clamoring for this story to continue. Um, we've seen Immortal Hulk in a bunch of one-shots. There's been a lot of teases. Uh, and Immortal Hulk has been a, a series that throughout this little 39 issues deep in the reader buzz is still incredibly strong. Now, there have definitely been points in the series where it seemed like some readers started to jump off, but then all of a sudden, like Al Pacino, they get pulled back in. Um, so it's one of those things I, I think that we're going to be able to talk about Immortal Hulk for some time leading up until the eventual end of the series. Now, there's a couple books from Marvel that whenever they come out, you automatically put them on this list and people are well aware of them. You can start with Donny Cates books with Thor. You can talk about Venom. But here's another one. Each time it comes out, we're talking about it now on Last Call. And we're talking about Strange Academy number four. Yeah, nothing specific that to point out or, you know, to mention to be on the lookout. Certainly those character variants have been very popular. But this is all about, like you said, a plug and play listing at this point. And you mentioned Venom and Thor. Those are the two prime examples. Other than that, right now, I would say Strange Academy. Those are ones that you got to make or sure. Or Tynan's Batman. Yeah, I would I, I, absolutely. I think regardless of whether or not there's an event of that series, Tynan's Batman may be a little different because it's more of a solid straight reader buzz. While it seems like everyone speculates on everything, Donnie Cates, and at the same point strange academies living in that world between speculation and reader buzz where it's hitting a little bit of both and i think that's why it's the secret sauce so even issue number four uh with not a lot of information definitely still one to be on the lookout for We're going to continue to round out this list, sticking with Marvel. We get the X of Swords Stasis number one. Yeah, now this is the, the first big part of this big, giant X-Men story. And I'm talking about big. There are so many chapters. Jonathan Hickman has already shown that his X-Men um, era is going to be defined by these mega events. Um, and, you know, I doubted the first time. And even though it was complicated and I felt like the story wasn't for me, you guys ate up Krakoa and gold balls and the whole nine. And for that, I'm kind of bullish on this storyline. Uh, this, this being kind of like an oversized big issue may be one that is maybe overordered or overlooked. Um, but I think for X fans, this is going to be an absolute must grab. So we've gone with the licensed property, we've gone with Marvel, but now we're going to shift over into that indie showcase portion of this show, brought to you by Black Cape Comics. You can pre-order all the books we're talking about in this video online, as well as these indie books. Black Cape Comics is known for their love of indie books. That's why the showcase is brought to you by them. And the first one we're going to talk about is one that I'm probably going to pronounce wrong as shit, and we're talking about Aut Autumnal number two. Yeah, Autumnal, Autonomal. Aut uh we were debating this beforehand. Yes. The uh, comments will be flowing. Yes, but Vault Comics, huge hit. That's, that's killing it on the back issue market. Um, you see what number one is doing. Uh, so there's no doubt there will be attention on number two because when indie comics like that build that kind of a quick dominant following in issue number one, a la what we're seeing Stillwater from Image Comics and Chip Zdarsky and Skybound doing right now, it's because there's reader buzz there. 
Um, it, it, it's purely based on that reader buzz. And when that happens, I think you have to start looking at the next several issues because a lot of those can pop as well. So this is one that even though it's a number two and it's a reader book and this, that, and the third, I can see this being a $10 book based on the fact that we're looking at a, a $25 number one. Yeah, and you got another book from Vault hitting FOC this week as well, and probably mispronounced this one too. And it's Giga, Giga number one. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is another one. That's true. I didn't I'm a phone a friend on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, but this is a book that has had major Twitter buzz. Um, I have tried to get more and more active on Twitter since that is where the creators are. Um, and it is incredible the amount of creators outside of vault comics, just from all over the comics industry who have tweeted about this title and talked about that. That is something I've noticed over the last year, Brian, that when creators get behind a property, uh, those properties tend to do pretty well. Um, so while this may have kind of almost an all ages look to it, um, this is what I'm kind of bullish about. Uh, I just think that, where there's smoke, there's fire, and enough people are talking about it, and we see what happened with Autonomal, or uh, we need help, Wassel Brothers, we need help with these uh, pronunciations. But, uh, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those things where I, I think that there, there's going to be enough chatter about this one, and it's one that I don't think is going to get ordered heavily by stores. Yeah, the good thing is, might not be able to pronounce them right, but I could spell it right. And that's all I need to do to order it online through blackcapecomics.com. But that's the end of showcase. We've also given you our picks. We get into now that big part of the show that a lot of people like to know about. And that's the later printings, right? That's right. Now, before I do, I've got to throw one more book out there. Definitely be on the lookout for Canto, Hollow Men, uh, the second volume, number three, hitting FOC this week. We've got to make sure we shout out our Canto fans uh, and members of the Canto. Never heard of it. <laughs> Never, right? But those additional printings, there's, again, Brian, more heat on this additional printing list. Um, first off, we've got Autonomal, which we just talked about what uh, the, the number one issue is doing on the back issue market. There's not one, but two second prints for, for number one. Now we'll see if that helps or hurts. There is a regular second print for issue number one, as well as a foil version. Um, at also keeping it in indie comics, Savage Dragon number 252 goes to a second print and there's some buzz on that one as well. Uh, Once in Future from Boom Studios, number nine goes to second print. And Fantastic Four Antithesis, number two, which is, of course, the first appearance of Antithesis and a uh, book that had some secondary market buzz, hits second print from Marvel, uh, who's actually giving us a light week on late printing. So that will do it for the list this week. So there it is, guys. There's our list for final order cutoff this coming Monday night. We don't include DC right now. Their FOC is the day before on Sunday, I believe, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not participating with us. We'll have to see what we can do to try to participate with them. But for now, uh, we're all previews, baby. Yeah. But let us know what books are you guys pre-ordering. Definitely don't forget that Canto. I know Lala is going, hey, how can you not say Canto? Mm -hmm. But we, we did. Jack threw that in there. A little yeah, slide at the end. But there's our pricks for FOC, guys. This is Brian Jack from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video.